All right, y'all, welcome back to another video. We are working on Slick Rick. The last time you guys saw it at the track, we were making some uh, bar changes and moving weight around and this and that. We made some, some wild discoveries since then. So we'll go over those really quick. Uh, you guys heard me mention if, in the video, I was like, man, the anti-roll bar is like, you gotta be twisted or broken or something. Uh, well, actually, it one of the times at wheelie, it sheared one of these bolts off right here. So we were one bolt short and that was allowing the anti-roll bar to uh, kind of rotate like this way, um, but at like a weird angle. So if this is the anti-roll bar, it would rotate forward just on one side. So it would kind of do like that motion. Um, that kind of skewed our data a little bit, but we got some pretty good data. When I looked at the data, I said, man, we need to come in here. We need to uh, move this top bar on the rear housing down one because it had like a lot of leverage. And as we'd go out, the shock velocity would increase. So the, the fastest point that the shock would separate would be right at the very end, which is not ideal. Well, come to find out, um, these are your special JEGS brackets and the Heim hits the rear housing or the, the the tube the axle tube and you can't get the bolt in and if you can't tell we've actually clearanced it as much as we feel comfortable with and it still doesn't fit so we're putting it back to where it was <laughs> race car so what we're doing now is uh well we're starting with the car we're in the valve we're gonna put the belly pan on it um once we make this bar change you're gonna be good to go to the track we're going to put the bar back to where it went down the racetrack completely because the data looked relatively good. Uh, since then, we've removed some weight out of the back, very far back, all the way back here in the bumper. We took uh, about 40, 50 pounds out of it, and it's still got a bunch of weight on it here. So we are going to put it back there because the shock data looked the best. Uh, the shock was actually sh slowing down before uh, complete separation, and um, I guess I was a little premature on making a bar change. I should have tried that a little bit more, but gotten the wheelie control but the wheel control table was really not good so um it didn't need to get in the wheelie control there i like running a wheelie control table that's um it's got two axes it's got rear shock travel versus pitch angle of the vehicle right so that way um if the rear shock is separated all the way right like seven or eight inches of separation and you have a pitch angle of zero you're actually wheeling even though you know zero pitch angle you'd be like, oh, well, wouldn't that just be on the ground? No, because look at how much further the rear is than the front. So it kind of skews the data. The table that was in there now was going just off of pitch angle. And as you could tell by me wheeling the car and beating the shit out of my Projack tabs, not ideal, um, not ideal whatsoever. So I bent this guy back and these have been the only thing saving the front end. It's got some wheelie skis further back, but in another life, they were probably useful, not in our life. So Scott and I were sitting there looking at the data. Um, I changed the bar five out of six passes. It's all way to do it. Just moving it around. Got to see what works. And um, and I looked at the data. You looked at the data. We both agreed this this move right here on the rear housing. That would be the move. And the, the race car god said, not today. This is those physical limitations when you start telling people like, look, there's some stuff you just got to find a compromise. Yeah. There it is. <laughs> so the data wasn't bad, and I don't have enough laps. I, I, I really wanted to make the most of my, um, of my time at the track, and I feel like I did by moving the bar around a whole lot. So what we're going to do now is we are going to move that slider bracket. We're going to move it up one hole on the um, chassis side. So if I, if, I, if I can remember correctly, I don't think I, I don't know. Listen, you know my memory. Um, I think right now we have a spread of six and a half and we moved it a quarter inch hole. So we should move it back to six and three quarter inch. That's where we were. If I can remember, that's a tall task. And if it's not, guess what? We'll, we'll move it, try we'll, it again. We'll, technically speaking, if we move it back and the data mirrors the other one, we'll be like, oh, we hit the nail on the head. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, trying to make some improvements on the car. Obviously, uh, put some new bolts in the anti-roll bar, go over everything front to back, head to toe. We tried to move that bar. It wouldn't let us move it. Um, that sucks. So we're going to, the, the upper bar on the rear housing, it just is what it is. It's not going anywhere. Um, right now, right now, in the future, we will be able to move that. Yeah. Whether we, we, these brackets are, I mean, they're nice. These are some nice brackets, but they're not, 
there there are better brackets out there for sure. Having only four big adjustments on the lower and three on the upper, um, not ideal. You like to have a lot more adjustability than that. But uh, we're gonna I'm gonna set the camera down. We're gonna make uh, a bar change. We'll put the anti roll bar back together. We'll tighten the top bars. We'll go over everything. Just a good little nut and bolt and then um we should be ready to put the belly pan on and we're ready to go to the track i think we're gonna be testing next week as long as the weather cooperates with us we're we're in a potential hurricane watch right now we're at a 50 percent chance of activity in uh the carolinas to georgia so if you guys are interested in doing storm work hit me up john at john .com. you can email me there and uh, please email me with your contact info if you send me an email and you're like hey i want to do storm work like Throw me a bone. Be like, hey, I want to do storm work. I live here, and this is my phone number, so I can contact you. But yeah, let's uh, let's get into this. successful the bar has been changed I know it doesn't look any different really but a quarter inch will change your life trust me trust me you gotta go through life a quarter inch at a time been doing it for 30 years and a roll bar needs to be neutral out anytime you make a bar change you got to neutral the anti roll bar make sure there's no preload in there um, check pinion angle our pinion angle is is well under one degree up so we're good with that i think it's like what did i say it was point point half a degree point five it's fine and then the next seven measurements were different so somewhere in there <laughs> but we're gonna stick the belly pan on it we ran the valves everything checked out with the motor uh baked the oil all look good transmission fluid a uh, piece of cake ready to do some testing uh before our next event which is galat uh september what 27th 28th we're gonna try to stick it to the 252 guys we're gonna show them what the 910 is that where we are 910 919 yeah listen same thing i don't know that shows you how much i know like we're gonna show us how they we're gonna show them how they do it in benson there you go so yeah i mean everything on this uh look good let's talk to the our toughest critic we're gonna go through here our toughest critic here what do you mean what, yeah, yeah i hope you hear me i'm talking what do you got to say i hope we go test four days this week yeah are you putting rods in it? I would, yeah. I'll find a set of rods for you. I'll put it in too. What? Don't give me the head shake. You already know. What? Well, I'm asking you, that's why I don't know. I, I want to go test 10 days a week if we could. Ten. No. Yeah. <laughs> There's only so many hours in the day. <laughs> so folks, you heard it here first. Logan's putting the next set of rods in. He's following all the rings. He's checking all the bearing clearances. I think next time we do rods, we have to do pistons. We do have to do pistons next time. So, Logan's director of maintenance. Logan is director of maintenance. The DR. You know it's a good maintenance cycle when you have an impact ratchet and a damn belt sander out. That means we're really doing something. I was out of town doing something, and they put 80 runs on the oil charge. Huh? We were racing, though. Yeah, we were. What you, you Look at this man. He's got so much pent-up energy. He just wants to grab someone and test with him. 